Hello and welcome. This is Hollywood North News. I'm very lucky to be here with my colleague Domingos and the creative writing team and stars of Registering of Fate, a sci-fi short film that um, we love and we've got a review on on the site. So I'm just going to pass over to my colleague Domingos, um, who's going to introduce himself. Uh, hi, uh, my name is Domingos and I write with Daryl and uh, take part in podcasts and we've gone to various events together and um, yeah, and, and I'm really looking forward to this because I've really enjoyed it and um, yeah, it's nice to meet you all. <laughs> okay. Um, Sorry, I would just pass it on to Lance if you want to introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Lance. Uh, I'm the co-director, visual effects uh, editor and video editor of Red String of Fate. Okay, thank you. Um, Lavina, can you introduce yourself? Hey, I'm Lavina Yavari. I'm the co-director, art director, uh, producer, and also actor for Red String of Fate. Okay, and we, um, last but not least, we have Anna. Hello, my name is Anna. Um, I'm the writer of the movie, The Story, and the lead actress in it. Also, Lance and Lavina also contribute writing the scripts as well, but I created the story and they expanded the world into what it is. Okay, well, that's excellent. So what we're gonna do is get straight into our question. And it's a question from me, and then you hear a question from Dom in a bit. And I would just like to know who or what were your influences um, for Vestering of Fate, especially the set dressing. Um, I think both me and Dom really liked um, the look. So we just wanted to um, figure out where, where, that, where those ideas came from. Lavina, go for it. Yeah, so um, I knew the set deck the artist is Steve Hazard, so he built all of those animatronics and robots and just had them in his warehouse for many years. And he'd use them for concerts, and he used to host underground robot fights in Toronto that I would attend. And they actually, like, there were these little robots, they actually had, like, chainsaws on them, they'd spark, they would, like, light each other on fire, it was insane. But anyways, he had all this stuff, and I always wanted to use it as props for a movie, but I never got around to it. And then Anna hit me up and she was like, listen, I want to write a script. Uh, I'm not getting the acting roles that I want. I'm getting stereotyped, you know, in Hollywood. And I felt I was as well, too. I was always getting like the heroine chick or like, you know, the hooker. And we both wanted to play something more into the what we loved, which is anime and sci-fi. So I told her, I was like, listen, I have all of these props. And then she was like, OK. And then she just kind of created a universe based off of what we had available to us. And then when we went on to set to film it, I brought additional like props, like neon signs and like figurines and stuff, which is just like, I was just pulling inspiration from like, like I said, anime, like Ghost in the Shell, like uh, Blade Runner, Terminator. We wanted to tribute all of those things. So I kind of hid Easter eggs all over the set for that. It was actually a very, I'm just going to piggyback on Lovina on what she said about the art direction, because um, it was a very depressing Tuesday evening. I'm just <laughs> I decided to write a love story. <laughs> it was very dramatic on my end, by the way. No, no, it's not real. I'm just kidding. So I was looking through photos. I love animes and I love sci-fi. And I feel like there is a missing voice in that area mm -hmm. of in terms of telling it in a, in a, in a love way. And I, I love love, by the way. I'm a lover of love. I love love movies. I love re the relationship of love, the concept of love, the feeling of love, and what drives people to love. Like, I love that. So when I was sitting there looking at what's happening with the pandemic, what the world has put us, you know, on this test, and I was thinking, I want to write a love story that people can just relate to doesn't matter who you are or what you are or where you are a feeling losing somebody and then what would you do what can you do if you have all the um availability all these access for you to bring this person you know back to life kind of thing so i that's why i decided to write this fantasy this alternate universe of this world that i could be in really and then I was going through Lavina's pictures as I really wanted Lavina to play the other character. And I was going through her pictures and her pictures are so inspirational. She's a model, she's an art director and she always create a world that I see my film in. So I hit her up and I was like, hey, you have this awesome photo of you like taking pictures with these robots. I have this script that is 
written this way. It's kind of animated and it's sci-fi, it's cyberpunk, it's super current. And she understood it right away. And that's where we were just like, oh, I can do this. And I'm like, that sounds great. And Olivia's like, oh, I have this, I have that. I'm like, that's amazing. And then she pulled in Lance, our magical world creator. Um, and then we just sat down and it blossomed into Rest String of Fate. And we call it Rest String of Fate is because there's actually a meaning behind that name, but you'll find out in the future, in the, in the future. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Dope. You got the next question? Yeah, hi guys. This is for um, all three of you, Lance, Lavina, and Una. Um, obviously, me and Daryl really enjoyed it. We we're on the same page and we didn't know each other were going to watch this film. And when I saw it, what I noticed, I want to expand what Daryl said, is that the cinematography, the presentation was really beautifully done. And I love the purple tints and the colorway that you, you put into the film. It sort of made it stand out from a lot of other features and shorts. Um, I just want to know, what, was it a collaborative effort or was it something that you guys, all three of you, developed over the creation of the film and project? Uh, I knew immediately, like, how I wanted to, like, light the film, like, the color palettes needed. Uh, I'm huge into using, like, neon, like, lights in all of my photo shoots and stuff. And I just love the mood that it conveys and, like, how much it, like, immerses you into a scene. So I knew right off the bat, like, I want purples and, like, pinks and just really bold blues in the short. I just felt that it enhanced that kind of industrial look to it. So, yeah, and then Lance brought in uh, one of his friends, Angel, who was our cinematographer, and he was able to just translate what we wanted into, into like, our vision. Uh, we also had a very small working space, so a lot of the shots we had to just even alter on the day. So we didn't get exactly what we wanted, but it still turned out really awesome, like with what we had. Yeah, it looked yeah, pretty we close to you. Yeah, yeah, we really had, <laughs> um, <laughs> we, uh, I had to work with the space. Like it was really small. You couldn't and, stand up straight, which yeah. was really funny. He, he, was bent, <laughs> he was bent down the whole shoot because it's yeah. like the yeah. ceilings are so low. Yeah, I'm about, uh, almost six, uh, six foot, like around five eleven. So uh, the whole shoot, I had to spend like ducking and bending <laughs> over. Otherwise I'd hit my head on the-, the And we uh, smashed roof. our heads yeah. on the pipes Oh lot. my god! There's a lot of exposed pipes in the ceilings and we all like, we were smashing our heads in that like hard. <laughs> yeah, and that was another challenge uh, because of the small space, like to light it, we had to hide lights in different areas. Like Angel had a really good, did a really good job in like adding it um, in certain places or hiding it behind poles and different areas or or and keeping it part of the aesthetic of the lights like sometimes you see the lights but it's all in a creative way yeah yeah you know. every shot was definitely purposely placed and, and purposely planned. shot and purposely yeah. planned very carefully because we have very limited of time limit of people limit of space and uh, we're just lucky to be, be able to create what we created. And it's all because of like really huge team effort and Lavina's vision. Yeah, all of us, two days, two days we managed to do it, which is like, I still think is so insane. I, I, I think we are, we are too humble, guys, honestly. Like, <laughs> <laughs> seriously, now that I'm sitting back, like we, we did this almost two years ago and wow. everything happened so fast. And usually in the film industry, it takes a while to develop and takes a while to get there. But we made it happen within a very short amount of time. And then we went on camera, like pre-production, I don't know, a couple of days or nights, and then into production and then post-production for like maybe a couple of weeks and bam, it's the project. That's what you get when somebody's passionate about it. That's what you get when somebody, when you have a group of talents who are on the same page and who wants to create the same thing and has the same voice. and look what we created something fantastic awesome you know yeah, and we were on a really tight deadline because uh, very tight we we won a grant um yeah. from uh, the inside out film festival and uh with that grant we had to um pretty much we we had started pre-production and pitched in it to december them. And, yeah. yeah in december then we found out we actually won the grant in what february february or, yeah and, and then we had to hand um we had to film it and get the team together and get the set ready and everything um 
we did that in um, March, three weeks. end of March. Yeah, something no, like that. No, it was three weeks we did it because it, it was February 27th and 28th that we oh, filmed. Oh, 27th, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and then from March to May, we were doing like the editing yeah. and scoring and stuff, yeah. And then we had to hand it into the film festival so they can screen it. So yeah. it was really tight. And, uh, and when we got it, they were like, wow, this is a really ambitious project. Are you sure you can get it in on time and finish this? And then we're like, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, we're, we're going to do it. It was four months. Yeah. It, like post-production and like filming. Yeah. That was really but, Yeah. Bad. All together. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's, that is impressive. So. Thank you. Um, as you as you just alluded to earlier in one of, with one of your earlier questions, um, the the industry has come a long way, but obviously it's still got a long way to go. We can see, uh, for instance, um, some we see in sci-fi and fantasy are probably the best examples of seeing LGBT leads um, mm -hmm. within shows going forward. Uh, you, we mentioned, we were talking about Shadowhunters before we began recording, and we obviously have that. Um, that's one of the better examples that we can see on TV. Um, my personal favorite uh, would be Motherland Fort Salem for having a um, LGBT couple um, front and center. Um, you do it to the fact that you weren't finding um, the roles um, that you felt um, that you needed to express your craft and that maybe you're being typecast. I mean, I guess maybe if you could talk a little bit about um, the two sides of that, um, um, good examples and maybe and maybe sort of the, the bad experiences that you've that all of you've had um, trying to move forward in the film and TV industry. Lavina, you want to start? Yeah, I guess like for me, the good is like I, as an actor, I've primarily worked on a lot of uh, sci-fi and like comic book movies and TV shows, which has been super freaking awesome. Um, but like the bad for me is it took a while for me to break out of getting a lot of auditions for like nude roles because like they were like, oh, you're like a punk chick. So you have daddy issues. So you're going to be that topless goth girl in this horror movie, or you're going to be like this drugged out chick. So I was getting a lot of that, which I... I personally, like, I will do something like that if it's mo moving the plot of the story. Like, for example, the girl with the dragon tattoo. She has, like, you know, nude scenes and I would do it for that. But for something like a horror movie, like, I just, I didn't care for it. It's just not who I am. Like, I just, I, I don't know. It took a while for me to shut out of that. And uh, I also, like I said, I, I really love, like, sci-fi. I want to do more, like, action roles. Like, I'm huge into martial arts and stuff. But I just don't really get those offers. And even Anna, she's the same way too. So we just kind of wanted to showcase ourselves in a different way because I find the industry, they look at you and they kind of pigeonhole you as one thing and they can never unsee you. And you have to kind of break out of that on your own. You can't wait for them to give you the chance. You have to show them. And uh, that's what we wanted to do. And I also wanted to like, you know, just get into filmmaking anyways, because I find in Canada especially, we don't really have a strong voice in the sci-fi community. We don't have that much content for that. And I knew that I was capable of bringing that for our country and like kind of putting us on the map. And like, that's kind of my goal is to kind of make more features and get out there representing that for us. Mm -hmm. And just to piggyback on Lavina, talk about typecasting. Um, I, what drives me in this industry is seeing something different, current, you know, like time. I mean, if I want to watch what happened in 1960, I'll go back to a, a 1960 film. If I want to watch another period, I'll go back to that. But right now, I want to watch something right now. What's reflecting the world right now, the people that lives on this planet right now, emotions that have been discovered right now, and relationships and sexuality, everything right now. So I'm not interested in, you know, telling a story, being a desk clerk number 56 on an on a office building or like being a, a I don't know, a, what did I recently just uh, audition? Um, oh, um, a paramedic number, I don't know, paramedic number two or something like that. Sure, I can play those roles. Absolutely no problem. And I nailed it. But I feel like it's not currently 
what people want to see and people crave, at least not me. What I'm craving is something different, something new, something that reflects the current time. And as an artist, I feel like that's my responsibility is to create something that is different, that reflects the current time. So that's why I read String of Faith, the world, the minute when I sit down and write this story, I was writing on, I was thinking, okay, Sam, this character, what is it that I can do to bring this character alive so be more related to relatable to everybody not just an Asian person watching it you know like um, Lance can watch it be like I can relate to Sam you know so I created the situation where everybody can relate to when you release um when you lost something and getting it back so from there I start writing about like characters that I can play I've never been cast playing a smart person before it's always like desk clerk number 52 or like moms or like paramedics so I'm like I'm gonna write myself to be a computer engineer you know somebody that's so different and out there and the world that we exist in is so futuristic where robots exist alien exist magic exists anything exists you know, it's just like the current world that we're living right now with metaverse and everything else in terms of technology. Obviously, I'm like frictionizing everything because it is a storytelling. So, and I, I know that Lavina and I talked about like she wants to play something else besides what she actually looks like, which I totally agreed. You know, so I wrote her to be like, you're going to be an alien-ish kind of a robot. We changed the script a little bit, but originally she was an alien, but now she's a robot. <laughs> so she became a robot. And um, yeah, like, and the sexuality part as well, like myself, I call my, I consider myself as bisexual or pansexual, so is Lavina. And representing another sexuality on screen is still quite new to the industry at this point, but we exist long time ago. <laughs> We've been around for a long time, you know, um, it just hasn't been surface like this as, as often as much as currently now so I'm very happy to see that transgender actors are getting their spotlights you know um the LGBTQ plus everybody's getting their spotlight right now because it's about time that we reflect the current civilization that we reflect on the current time of human relationships um yeah, that's what I truly want to write about, like this type of love, you know? Mm -hmm. So I went on over there. Oh my gosh, I hope this is going to be edited. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, go on. Uh, yeah. Um, so I want to sort of, I guess I want to sort of explore that, what you said. Um, I was going to ask all of you, so how do you believe um, your filmmaking experience in the independent scene, how do you think Canada is sort of adapting with a diversity, modern diversity, modern storytelling from young filmmakers like yourself? How do you think they're adapting to modern times to where it was before? So well, something I've noticed, I've noticed a lot more, a lot of Canadian talent are coming home to try and do a lot of projects. I don't know if that's something that you've noticed has helped you guys in your filmmaking process and this project, or is it something that's still evolving? You got, do you believe? In what? terms of like having like diversity and like our, yeah. our crews yeah. and stuff, yeah. I find like, well, as an artist, like you, you just naturally create art that's a reflection of your life and like, you know, you're just like what you're the time that you're living in. And for me, it was just like most of my art is just naturally just very diverse because like I just grew up with that. I always had like just living in Toronto, like we're so multicultural here. So that's why I just find it so weird whenever I see stuff on like television where it doesn't show a group of friends where there's like a black friend, an Asian friend, an Indian friend. Because for me, that's what my friend group is. It's just mm -hmm. naturally like that. So when I write it, I'm genuinely just writing like characters inspired by these friends. So it's just like a, a natural thing for me. Um, and I think, yeah, like we're just a product of our time because if this was like, 40 years ago we were making red string it probably would have been far different right mm, like just yeah. the way like society is so I, I really just think it's a reflection of where we are and like yeah i don't know what are you guys yeah and nice. also uh something i've noticed uh for a while sort of in the scene um canadian independent scene sometimes they use a lot of the same people 
um, over and over again. And, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm not exactly sure why. I, I think they just know them because they're not really marquee people or someone you can like really sell a film off of. And I was always thinking, why don't you just switch it up or change it up? Because I keep seeing the same sort of people in a lot of this, uh, a lot of different films. They keep, it's like, they get, I guess they get into cliques and they just kind of work with the mm, same people. It's, it's politics, dude. It's so I noticed that in like, in Toronto, like, I don't want to shit talk, but I'm going to say like, there's organizations in Canada, for example. And if you're an actor and you're a working actor and you have lots of money and you're donating to these organizations, you're basically going to get picked a lot for stuff because you're kind of funding them. And that's also, it's politics. That's, that. that's, that's the, yeah, yeah, dude, that's the thing. Well, if you look at the, our, for example, our union, Actra, which we love, Actra is phenomenal. Love, love and them. thanks to Actra, Breaststring made Actra. it possible. Thank but, you, Actra, we love you. <laughs> but if you kind of look at their covers, every month they have a magazine and it's always featuring a cover of like an actor in Canada. But that actor also happens, if you look at the back page, they also happen to like donate money to the, um, the union. So I'm just kind of like probably why the same 10 yeah. people and, it's and, very and this, this industry is very gatekeeping <laughs> very very gatekeeping so like you kind of have to pave your own way into it if you want to make it which is what i love about being alive now is that i don't need hollywood or big production studios to help me i can just make shit on my own with my friends and get in yeah so. that, that was great that actra did choose us for this um grant to make the the film so they've expanded like who who's getting into films and all that. And, and that was something that I, I really enjoyed because I have all these friends like Lavina and then she introduced me to Anna. And then I'm thinking like, why aren't these people in a lot more films? Like, because they have great looks, they're great, they're really talented. And that was something that I was really excited to do this with them because like on top of like being a fan of their stuff and their work, um, it's great to create more stuff with them. And also bring in other people who we don't usually see, who are just as talented, that we don't usually see um, working on productions or featured in different roles. Hmm. So, that, so that was awesome. Yeah. I'm going to piggyback off those two. Awesome. And uh, back to my Tuesday sad evening while I was writing the script before I hit up Lovina. Um, another thought came to me was that Canadian content I was craving something that's a little bit more, um, it's already happening in Asia, which is tons of sci-fi, tons of CGI, tons of like robot stuff and tons of alien stuff. Like they're super futuristic. If I, I love foreign films and I lot, so a lot, like I watch a lot of foreign televisions as well. And if you look at all the stuff in, you know, England and like Europe and China, it's a lot more futuristic feel, you know? And when I wrote this script, I present to Lavina. Lavina's like, hey, guess what? Actra has this contest. Let's enter. And I'm like, oh my God, perfect. I want to write this for Canada, for Canadian content. Let's, let's, if we have to be, you know, I know there's a huge gatekeeper, but if, if me and Lavina has to be the gate breaker to break the gate, we'll break it. You know, I'll write this, make it so different. And just to show Canadian that like, hey, there's another side of Canada production. There's another side of Canadian storytelling that is extremely futuristic, that is extremely current, in fact, maybe more forward, that maybe can inspire other creating, um, a lot of filmmakers and other content creators and other, um, the ethnicity background people to just speak up their voice and create something that's always within the head and don't be afraid by it. Oh, there's a meeting pop up, say upgrade. Okay. Give me a moment, guys, sorry. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry, I'm going on and on about this interview. I hope it'll be edited down. I'm just so passionate. Unnecessary noise. Sorry about that. Yeah, ah, sorry. that's okay. Thank you. But yeah, like, um, that's why you don't see this in Canadian content. Like, you don't really see restoring a face, something like this in Canadian content. If you show this, they'll be like, oh my God, okay, Asian Lee, is it from China? Is it from Hong Kong? Is it Japan? Or is it the States? You would never say that's a Canadian movie. You know what I mean? So that's why Lavina and I created this is to open people's eyes and be like, look, we're diversity. We have tons of options. Let's bring multiple flavors to this chocolate box. Come on. It's not just one flavor. There's, there's like, it's a pot of gold. There's like different types of flavors in there. So. Okay. Right. 
Right. So I was quick question. Just wondered how did um, the three of you meet? He. I met oh, Lance. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah we, I met we, Lance like what is it like ten years ago, eleven years ago? Yeah, we were casting. We we're doing this zombie short film, and one of my friends. Um, he had met Lavina on another film shoot. You were doing makeup, I think, on that. And you were getting into acting at that time. Yeah. And then uh, I remember we casted her because she had like an awesome look. And um, it, was, it was for a small role. Um, it, at first, it was a small role. And then we got to meet her and she was really fun and cool. And, um, and then it became like she became this like zombie kick, ass kicking person in our film. And then from there, we were just like friends for over 10 years. Yeah. And then yeah. uh, Anna and I were in the same acting agency. And uh, yeah, we met up. Uh, we were signed around the same time, I believe. I think you were like, before me, though. I, yeah, I was, I was before, before you. Me. And then like you and I were like booking a lot in our agency. And so we went out for like dinner to like celebrate. And mm -hmm. so I knew you for a little while before we actually decided to collaborate. Yeah, oh, yeah, one thing I find it really funny is that like a lot of times people in our acting world, they always look at you and be like, hmm, what kind of character can you play? Like, what are you, you know? It's just um, how agents see things. And Lavina was the person that my agent kind of showed like, you're like her. So I'm like, oh, okay, I'm like her, okay. I don't know what that means, so I'm just me. But in their eyes is how they see me as Lavina. And that's how Lavina's got onto my radar because they're like, you're like her. I'm like, okay. So we met up, we had dinner, and I'm like, yeah, shit, I am like her. <laughs> we totally get along, and we're totally like the same thing. We're totally share the same vibe. Like, okay, yeah, I'm totally like her. And then we start working, and, like, we kind of booked similar things, but, like, different role. Like, she got the Caucasian side of things. I got, like, the Asian cool side of things. So, and it just makes sense for us to come together and meet to make Red String a fate. That's great. Um, right, so... Dom, you get our last question, and oh, then we'll go no into the um, Canadian movie film thing, and that uh, that will sign off. Okay. All right. Um. No, no. What I'm going to ask, actually, obviously, you, you know, you create this project, and it's been really successful. Um, and a uh, festival and so forth. What advice would you give to sort of aspiring, uh, not just young Canadian filmmakers, uh, that are making their way like yourselves? any filmmakers around the world, what advice would you give to them in regards to if they're afraid or if they know what to do to, you know, to keep persevering and how you guys have and, you know, and open opportunities for themselves? What would you advise them? So one of like the best advice I got recently was like, be aware that you're not finished your script until you're on set. You're going to be constantly editing even while you're filming. So like keep that in mind. Um, and then also like I started directing like, a couple years ago like I tried like two other times to direct but I worked with other crews and it just completely just fell apart for me where I just didn't vibe with anyone people didn't like you know help care to really properly execute my vision or listen to me and that's like a huge huge thing in this industry is like you really have to find people that you work well with that is the most important thing like the project is secondary it's it's your team if you don't vibe with your team, you're not going to create good art because you're just not going to be in a good mood and it's just not going to, you're not like working together as a, as a proper team to kind of execute it. And so I was really lucky that eventually like I came across Lance, Anna and like the rest of our team uh, because like that, I don't think I would have been able to like make it that way if it weren't for me working with people that I actually enjoyed being around. It's very, very important. And then also like, don't be too ambitious. Use what you have around you. So if you have like your mom's house, your living room and like an old car, write a script based on that using those things. Because especially if you're making your first movie, you want to like cut corners and like save money and budget properly. And also remember to save money, put some money aside to submit to festivals. A lot of people forget that. They think about that after. Think about that before, like build a budget and like figure out how many festivals you want to submit to because that's really expensive. Yeah. Lance? Um, yeah, just uh, keep making things like um, once you get a crew or people you vibe with, like even just making small things 
and just keep doing it and practicing, even if no one's going to watch it. And eventually you'll keep getting bigger and bigger stuff and uh, more confidence as well, the more stuff you create. So yeah, just keep making stuff with the things you have with you at first, the people with you, like if you have a, a friend who's available, maybe you can give them a little role. Like if, even if this film or this little short is not gonna be seen for anyone, you're just practicing and eventually you'll start getting um, more, uh, add more people to your crew, um, people with connections, um, be good to everybody because you never know down the line, they may be able to help you find a location or they have a job at some production company and they want to contact you. And like, so making connections like that, um, yeah, just keep doing things and be nice to everyone. <laughs> yeah, de yeah, definitely be nice to everyone, man. Because like, there's so many people that I met over the years that were like working and catering on film sets that are now like producers or like casting directors. So you like really just, just be chill with everyone. Treat everyone yeah. with respect. 100%. And um, yeah, absolutely. And also you just never know what your small little thoughts might bloom into, you know, like don't, it's easy said than done. Don't be afraid, obviously. But what's important is that you make that first move. So stand up, put the phone in front of your face, and just talk to yourself, say something, do something, you know, drop down ideas. Like how I started, like I'm extremely, I'm extremely shy. I'm actually introvert. Um, you won't be able to tell because I'm like out there and I talk a lot, but being in front of camera to me, it's actually extremely scary. I, I shake when I'm in front of camera, but at the same time, it's very exciting for me. So what I do is I change my thought into scare to be exciting. So from that, because I changed my thought, I'm able to move on to do things. So a lot of times it's ourselves that stops ourselves from moving forward, creativity, like to making something unique and different. So what I'm trying to say is that even though you're scared shit and you, you can't, you know, push yourself to move forward to make this, or you think the idea is silly, nobody will understand, or like, or you don't think it's worth anything, then you know what? Don't do it for people, do it for yourself. Just write it for yourself, write it and to see how you self doing it. And the first project is going to be friends and family members, you know, have your friends help you have your family members there for you. Like Lavina Len said, use whatever's around you. Like we have no money. If we didn't get this grant, we would have been doing the exact same thing, friends and family deals. So because we want this grant, we had a little bit of leave room, you know, that's, that's what makes a difference. But nowadays technology is so easily accessible and like it's no longer like you're getting one megapixel per shot it's you're getting hd quality on your phone so you can make a silly you can you can make anything off your phone there's there's literally like no excuses except yourself so get up grab, grab a drink take a breather put the phone in your face start recording just start writing stuff anything anything literally anything you go to the washroom you go to get a drink, that could be a movie, you know? And just get your creative idea juice start floating, writing things down. You never know where it's gonna lead to. You could be talking to like Joe Schmo down and like, oh, I have this thing you wanna see. They could, could watch it and be like, oh my God, I, that's a great idea and turn into a feature. You just never know. It's exactly what happened to me and Lavina. I show her the script, I show her an idea. Then gosh, you could, she was like, oh, I like it. And then she jumped on board and I'm like, oh, okay, good. Okay. I'm not silly. I got this. I can do this. Yeah, I can do this. And here we are. You know, you just never know where it's going to take you. And all that is for you to get up, do it. That's all you have to do. Get up, whether you get up, get a drink, get up, go to washroom, get up, take a pen, whatever you got to do, just make that first move yourself. Okay. Very inspiring. I, yeah. <laughs> I can keep going and on and on, no. guys. I'm so sorry. I'm such a disaster. <laughs> no, it's great. Um, I, I agree with Dom. It's very inspiring. Um, Thank you. Some, uh, some of us, we're just getting started ourselves. Um, so obviously, we're um, closing out the interview now. And obviously, thank, thank you all for being involved. Uh, thank you for making such a uh, wonderful film. So the last question we're going to leave you with. Oh. My dog well. decided to join because she's she's been staring at me and <laughs> she's gonna cry if I don't show her. Okay, so we're just gonna end with uh, we are Hollywood North News. So uh, we can't leave we can't let you leave without talking a little bit about a um, piece of Canadian TV yes. or film that yes. inspires you and um, you three. So 
who was yeah, stuck. I'll go. Uh, for me, it was Ginger Snaps. No, so, you so, did it. Oh! Yeah, horror movie. Like I think it was like in the early two thousands. Probably oh, we know one it. of the best. Yeah, one of the best freaking horror movies. Best werewolf movie out there. It's Canadian. Filmed uh, and written and directed by John Fawcett, which I met and worked with like a couple years ago. He's freaking awesome. Best, best movie. Great film. Yeah. That was actually my inspiration too. This is why Lavina are the same vibe. Yo, we're like literally the same people. But I do have a list. So Lance, you go after and I'll tell my second one. Okay. Well, I'm a big fan of Ginger Snaps as well. But but since you said that. Uh, I really enjoyed, uh, if you like Ginger Snaps, I really enjoyed the series uh, Trickster, which uh, came out recently. And that's a supernatural thriller uh, coming of age story about this indigenous teen who is a drug dealer who's trying to support his family. And uh, he finds out he has a supernatural past. So it's a really awesome series. And um, it's a Canadian series and it's based on a, a book. Um, and it's it's just awesome. Yeah, yeah, I have heard of it. Such a shame so, about um, the, the behind the scenes issues that meant it stopped. Yeah, so early. there's one season of it. So uh, I don't know if there's going to be a season two. Uh, or, before, before probably not. not yeah. But uh, the season one, it's definitely worth watching. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, if they get a big enough uh, fan base uh, wanting it, um, maybe they'll get new creators or something to start season two. Um, but definitely I- watch that. Before Honor uh, hits us with her uh, ten top top ten list, um, <laughs> we were lucky enough to. I was lucky enough to meet Catherine Isabel uh, when she was doing oh, promo nice. for um, the Order a while back. She came to Comic Con oh. here in the UK. Um, nice. Yeah, so that she oh she was incredibly nice, and obviously it's great to see her still sticking in um, doing sci-fi, doing Canadian sci-fi as She's well. She's a scream queen. She's a classic she scream queen. Yeah, absolutely. So nice. Anna, I'm jelly. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna limit you to three. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll give you one more, maybe two, maybe I'm not kidding. Okay. Um, well, I love Ginger Snap. <laughs> I remember watching that and I was like, yo, that, I didn't know that's Canadian, you know what I mean? When you watch them, you're like, that's what I want ours to be. Like, you don't watch something, you're like, oh, that's Canadian. You watch it like, yeah, that's a fucking good film. And that's what ginger nap, it gives you that feel, you know, like international feel. So good thing Ginger Snap, really good. And uh, my second movie is The Cube. I don't know if you guys know The Cube. I remember. Nobody Cube. knows about it. It's super yeah, it's low budget. Yeah, it's a remake of a, of like a, a Japanese. Yeah, it's super yeah. low budget, but it's only one set. It's brilliant, brilliant storytelling. And at the end, I'm just like, I love movies like that. Like just, um, you guys haven't seen it. It's um, it's really cool. Um, it deals with like human psychological things and math, which I love. Um, and another one, let me look at my lists, is Boys in the Hall. Mm-hmm. And last night, The Fly. That's it. That's my list. I have more, but. Okay, sick. <laughs> yeah. The Fly is a good choice, too. <laughs> I'm like, I have more, but I'm going to stop myself because I'm sure you're going to be editing quite a bit. But yeah, like, um, but Ginger Snap really didn't inspire me as a teenager growing up watching them. That's I'm just dating myself with that timeline. But okay, <laughs> uh, that's great. Um, I can't thank you guys enough for ta- um, taking out the time to come and speak with us. Um, of course, thank yeah, you. thank you for having us, man. Oh, thank thank so you for reaching you out wanna... and like writing a sick review for us. Okay, yeah, so this is great. 